And you talked about this in the book, but can you, you talked about the 2,000 unit tablets that we can get. Some of the multivitamins have less, like 400 or something like that. How do we know how many units that we should be getting on a, on a daily or, or weekly basis? And you, you said earlier that it depends on size too. So is it important just to get tested and, and go that route instead of trying to do it ourselves at home? Well, so, we? the, so there are two different ways you can go about this. You can test and then um, uh, sort of hit and miss. Mm -hmm. Take a dose, remeasure, not enough, take more, remeasure, um, too much, back off, remeasure, okay? Um, or um, I have some, there's a table in the book um, that is a weight dose, it's actually mm -hmm. based on Michael Hollick's data. So Michael Hollick and Robert Heaney at, um, at, Robert Heaney at Creighton used for Michael Hollick's in Boston, they did a study back in around 2004 where they took middle-aged guys um, uh, and uh, they put one group on none, one group on 1,000, one group on 5,000, one group on 10,000 units of vitamin D a day and followed them for six months just to see what would happen to their vitamin D levels. That data gave us the farm, that between that and the submarine data, we, have, we know exactly how this drug functions, uh, vitamin D functions sure. as a drug, pharmacokinetic stuff, okay? And so we know I, you can take that data rejigger it and put it in table form that says, okay, if my vitamin D level is 20 and I want it to be um, 50, I need to take this many units a day, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can take the data off their table or off of their graphics and, and put it into tabular form and you can, it works like a charm and that table is in my book to, to exactly, precisely replace your, your vitamin mm -hmm. D levels, okay? Often I'll tell patients if you want a rule of thumb to just say, well, okay, well, before my, you know, I, I went to the doctor, he measured my level. I want to do something now. I don't want to wait two weeks to find out what my level is. I want to do something today. Um, uh, yeah, so media gratification part, right? <laughs> okay. So there are rules of thumb that help you get started, and then you can adjust it based on your blood level. Um, the rule of thumb is for fair-skinned people, um, so European Americans, 20 units per pound is a rough estimate of what it takes to get average vitamin D levels in this country to where we want them to be. Okay. So you take CDC data, Center for Disease Control, says the average American, Caucasian American, has a vitamin D level of 27 or something like that, mm -hmm. 25, 27. And if we want it to be 50, to get from 25 to 50 requires about 20 units per pound. Okay. okay? And then you can do the same math for African Americans, darker skin, and then there's gradations in between. African-American average vitamin D levels are like 15, 17, and so you have to get from there to 50. Hmm. And so it's going to take a little more to make that jump, and it's closer to 25 or 30 units per pound per day, okay? okay. Um, and so these are rules of thumb so that I, because I wanted them for myself, because I was measuring levels, and the patient would say, well, how much do you want me to start taking? I, well, I don't know. I don't know until your blood level comes back. Oh, you can't, so I can't take any until I, you, you mm -hmm. get my level back? Well, when's that going to be? You know, and there was more phone calls sure. and more hassle. This way I can just say, okay, here's a rule of thumb. I'll start them on this amount based on their size, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and then we'll adjust it according to their blood level. And if I overshoot, I back off, and if I undershoot, I jack them up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You talk about overshooting, you talked about that study that went from, you know, 1,000 a day up to 10,000 a day per person. Can you get too much, and, and how do we know if we have too much? What are some of the, the, the risk factors or warning signs? So the question of um, safety always comes up because it's a fat-soluble vitamin, and people, people, particularly people who are familiar with supplements, okay, is it fat-soluble or is it water-soluble? If it's water-soluble, I can take everything I want. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. If it's fat-soluble, I have to be careful because it might accumulate in my system or in my fat stores. Mm -hmm. Um, so we know that the half-life of vitamin D um, is 10 weeks. So that's how slow it is, as opposed to vitamin C, which is on the order of hours, mm -hmm. and it's gone. Okay? So 10 weeks versus a couple of hours, that is a big difference. Mm -hmm. okay? And you can't clear that 10 weeks very quickly if you overshoot. Okay? The beauty, though, is that when you go out in the sun to make vitamin D, 10 minutes in the middle of summer, middle of the day in your bathing suit, you're out at a lake party or something, okay? you're making probably 10,000 units of vitamin D3 every five or 10 minutes, and you're out there all mm -hmm. day in the party. Oh my God, you should be toxic, right? <laughs> but you're not. Mother Nature has figured out a way to prevent that from happening, at least with sun exposure. So you can get sunburn and call that sun toxicity, but it's not mm -hmm. vitamin D toxicity. You measure your level and your level's okay, okay? 
because any additional vitamin D beyond about 60, and it's, it's, it waffles, so somewhere between 60 and 90, the systems in your body start to shut off production despite sunlight. Okay, so more sun comes in, converts stuff, and immediately systems start kicking in that inactivate the stuff you just create because it says, okay, we got enough, we don't need any more, so it starts to, it's auto-regulating um, okay. sun exposure and vitamin D production. But supplementation is not. Now, if I go out, if say I'm taking a vitamin D supplement and my level is 50, right, where I want it to be, and then I go to a beach party, am I going to overdose on the sun because my level's already 50? No, you won't because your skin will detect that your level's already 50 and most of the D you make will be inactivated at the party. Mm, okay. And your level might go up to 80, but it'll still stay probably under 100. Normal being roughly 30 to 100 nanograms per mm -hmm. mil. But toxicity, so the question is, okay, so the sun is self-regulating, and so, but how much do you have to take to push your level outside of that 100? To get above 100, you probably have to take um, uh, twice what I'm recommending as, as a target dose, these 20 and 30 units per mm. pound, 20 or 25 units. So we're, we're looking at 50 plus units per pound. These are, these are, this is a lot of vitamin D, mm. okay? And that's just to get you over 100. But how many cases of toxicity are found over 100? Almost none. And in fact, how high mm. do you have to go before you start seeing reported cases of toxicity? The most recent study looking at, um, uh, it was actually a study to, to look at efficacy of, of vitamin D replacement. Um, uh, but it also was a study because Reinhold Wieth uh, uh, structured the study this way to understand how safe are high doses and how high can you go, okay? And so he did this study in multiple sclerosis patients and he titrated their intake up to 40,000 units a day of D3. And, and as part of the monitoring of the study, he measured calcium in the urine and calcium in the blood to look for any evidence that this was going to be too much. And he was measuring blood levels. Now, the blood levels did go up. These patients had 200 plus vitamin D levels, 200 mm -hmm. nanograms per liter or more at this 40,000 units. There was no calcium in the urine. There was no high calcium levels. Um, and so, and, and these patients were on this high dose for months, three or four or more months, okay? And then he ramped them back down. Um, but what that tells us is that there's a huge safety window of vitamin D from um, these lower doses that we're talking about, you know, 1,000 units a day or 20 units per pound, all the way up to these what I call hyper doses of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we have any logic to suggest why we would need that much vitamin D, but it's good to know that it's safe to be exposed to that much and not see any harm. Mm -hmm. So we're we're many fold lower than that at the amounts that we're suggesting in the, in the book. Um, uh, and, and, and those are targeting blood levels of around 50 nanograms per mil, which is where we think the uh, sweet spot is, somewhere between 30 and 50 is where you want to be all the time. Um, <clears throat> uh, but it's nice to know that you can take five, 10 times that much and you won't get into trouble. And you can take those, those, those large doses, you can take those large doses for several months and you still won't get into trouble. Mm -hmm. You'd have to take them for longer than three months to probably run into trouble. Um, so large safety window um, uh, um, uh, and a fairly large therapeutic window uh, for vitamin D.